Okay, here we are. Where are we now? So we're now in the barrel hall. <laughs> so this is uh, all underground. So just natural um, uh, temperature control. What's great about here is, I was saying earlier about we've got all these different sides. So we keep all of those batches separate. Mm -hmm. And we can keep, like we might have some batches that might be 100 barrels and we might have some batches that are only 5 barrels. Depending on wow. where, where we've picked or we might have an area within a block in a vineyard, what I call a sweet spot, where we'll mm -hmm. take some of those grapes, grapes and keep them separate. Um, and then at the end of the, when we go to do our blends, mm -hmm. we can go, okay, well maybe it's just a single vineyard because that's the best wine. Okay. And sometimes it might be, oh, I need a little bit more of this vineyard because it's giving a little more perfume and elegance. So if we're talking about Pinot. And I might use a little bit of this because it's got, it's got more of that sort of savoury character and then if I need a bit more weight I can use that. Now, there's no rules to it and I don't ever go in preconceived of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. But, and people go, oh how difficult is it to blend wine? Well when you've walked through those vineyards and eaten those grapes and you've, you've decided when to pick it and you see it through its fermentation, you've looked at it in barrel, you should in your mind know which way it's already going. So to me, it's very easy to do. So I'll look and go, eh, I reckon I know what will, what will help. It. And that's purely from maybe a bit of experience, but I'm not. But you but still. more about yeah. knowing intimately those vineyards and the wines. So. But you still have a, a this sort of ideal of the, the paragon, the, the, the perfect wine. You still have an idea of what, of what good means, right? Yeah. And your idea of good might not be everyone else's idea. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm that's what I meant by style, I guess is what is Yeah. So I mean I love those really elegant Pinot Noirs that have got power and concentration mm -hmm. but have elegance. So when you mm. do the uh, how do you say that? The the, 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 the the blending stage, right? You have a team of people and then we do and decide so we've got myself and another winemaker, our viticulturalist, um, and we have another couple of people within the company, and we do an allocation. So okay. what will happen is we do the allocation, and then I'll come back and do the blends, and if I think we need to change it, I'll make some changes, and I'll look at every barrel and go, I like that barrel, and I don't like that barrel, and I like that one's a bit better, and that's how it all comes about. Then what I do is I take that wine home, and I, I and I try outside of this environment. Mm. Oh, I, see. I give it to yeah. the dog, and I, you know, <laughs> and I've actually made changes because we don't. I mean, There's... you don't drink wine, and well, you do drink wine, but not a lot here. But you drink it at home with friends, yes, and yeah. so I love doing that because. And I've changed it, going. You know what? It just needs to be, you know, maybe a little bit more weight, or I need to back it off a bit. I want a bit more. Because that's the way you enjoy wine, that's the way I enjoy wine, so I will always look at it before we make the blends, or before we finalise Finalise that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it, that's just one of the fun things that we get to do. Yeah. I see you don't want to speak Chinese. Huh? You want to speak Chinese? Okay. So I want to, I've got another question. I want. Okay. Is it, you know, the, what's very different about Australia from everywhere else we go is the, the the liberty with which you can source grapes. I mean, you can source grapes from anywhere in the territory, or at least, Absolutely. or even anywhere you want, right? We, you, yeah. You can grow whatever variety you like, whatever clones you like, anywhere you like. Um, yeah, you know, there are some restrictions in terms of moving material from, you know, mm -hmm. a flux rate area to a non flux but that's uh -oh. essentially, you can grow, you know, we could be growing, um, Zinfandel here if we wanted to. Yeah. Now if it doesn't ripen and it makes pretty ordinary wine, well you're not going to gain a reputation no. on that. Um, but there's no rules and restrictions. So for, we, we came across one sparkling winemaker who gets their, a portion of their grapes anyway from Tasmania. Really, and yeah. then makes the wine mm. in, uh, in uh, the, the Pyrenees up there. It's Taltani, or I forget the name. Oh, Taltani. Yeah, Taltani. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're well, not going to go there. Yering's regionally specific, so we only take grapes from this region. Um, there's no, and that's what we choose to do. Mm -hmm. We don't take grapes from anywhere else and bring them in and blend them. We just get them from the Yarra Valley. But the labels, the labelling will say that it has to be any label that states 
a region has to be 85% from that region. 85%. If it was going to some market, and I think the US now has changed where it has to be 95%. Yeah, the US used to be also 85. Used to be 85, generally 85. So if we we could blend in 14% from somewhere else and still call it Yarra Valley, we don't choose to do that. But there's no there's no reason why you can't. So so the question you ask is is do should no you answered it. Yeah. You can do whatever they can do whatever they want, yeah. but they just they choose not. There's certainly to. this um, labelling laws within Australia, which is great because it means that you know you couldn't just plan everything every, from everywhere. That's you know maybe regions that are easier and cheaper to grow, and then call it Yarra Valley. That's against yeah. the law, and so it should be. You know. So do you buy a lot of grapes? Or? We grow mm. about fifty percent of what mm. we. Bring in, and the other 50% we work with long-term growers that we've worked with for 10 years or more. We don't buy just grapes yeah. from the spot market, mm. um, and that's critical from my point of view, is because you have control over the raw material. Right. So there's a thing that I love. It's called consistency of quality. So you you have to work very closely with this. You, Absolutely. You pay people yeah. to keep their yields down, right? Yeah. 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 I, I mean. mean in, in, if we were making a cheaper wine, sorry. Sorry, Bruce, we're just... Um, that was what you were talking about before, yeah. right? Try not to get <laughs> crushed. Oh, no, so I'm not wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> we're both in trouble. Yeah. Right. Um, I got the light. The, um, you know, label integrity is all part of one thing, but also you know, we, we choose to just be regionally specific. Um, with other people, you know, Grange Limited is just from all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's a marketing strategy. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. But, um, so, what was your other? for a very general question, if uh, a consumer wants to know uh, what's your favorite variety in this area, you would say for where you would say Pinot Noir? Or? Um, for red, look, I love Cabernet. Cabernet from here um, too? Yeah, and look, but in some years it's more difficult. Okay. So we don't make it every year. Mm. I mean, I love Pinot. Pinot. Um, yeah. And that would be uh, our most well-known variety mm -hmm. within the region and also at Yering. And I do love it, but it's, um, you know, at different times of the year, you enjoy different things. So, um, and often you get asked, you know, what's your favorite wine? I go, the one I yeah. drank. The one I'm drinking at the moment. See, this, is no, question some I, years, so. this is a question I get to be. I get my student ask me all the time. I say, I can't really tell you. Yeah, right. it's like so, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite wine at the moment? We go, beer. <laughs> beer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it does take a lot of beer to make good wine. <laughs> um, but no, look, it sort of changes. And look, um, we're always striving to make better wine. And so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I also get asked, you know, what's the best wine you've ever made? And I go, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 They still come. Ask my heirs after <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> so far we know, we know no one grows well, Shiraz grows well, and for wine, Villonier, Hosan, Chardonnay. Yeah, Hosan Chardonnay well. specifically yeah. because yeah. that's the most widely planted here. And a very um, universal variety. Yeah. So from the upper year for sparkling wine, for table wine. But it's a that that would be the most well known. But we got a little bit of riesling and so oh, you riesling too, yeah. Mm. Wow, um, we do a off dry riesling, so a semi sweet riesling. Mm. But again, it's not a, 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 a main focus of our Chardonnay. You know, um, Marsan and Viognier aren't the main focus. Um, Nebbiolo and Sangiovese aren't the main focus. It's really Chardonnay, Pinot, and Shiraz is really what we okay. concentrate on. Mm. So, that's good. Say something to conclude, Iwa. Okay. That's it. Nah, nigga, Ganganya就是到我们看了很多东西,那最主要他,他有一个哲学的观点,他认为他所处的这个地方呢,就是一个比较能量的产区,所以他不用跟人家去竞争去做那些很肥厚的泡酒。也非常有名,也有气泡酒,所以他刚好特别提到他气泡酒一定要走那种酸度比较高,然后清爽的那种风格。
这个领域里面呢，他们当然有种一些比较非主流产区的葡萄哈，并不是说啊，香、呃、奈儿是最好，而是说香奈儿在这边最多哈。跟他自己也说，像其他的葡萄品种啊、呃，例如刚刚讲比永叶啊，或者是那个马赛，这边也可以种，只是说并不是主流的。那今天因为时间很短，所以我没办法做很多翻译哈、哦。那可能有机会我们再来做一些字幕也不一定。OK，So、okay. yeah. thank you. I agree with everything you said.